everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and today I have a very, very special sequence for you. So today, as in when this video is being uploaded, it is the new moon and we are going to be doing a sequence that is targeting and specializing and cultivating the energy of this new moon. We will be working with moon salutations, which is different from our more commonly known sun salutation. So expanding on what I meant by cultivating the energy of this new moon. You can skip forward to when the video starts. If you are either practicing at a different uh, moon cycle of the year, or if you just don't care about astrology, that's okay too. But for this specific new moon as of the end of July in 2022, this moon is in Leo, which is very special to me personally, as I myself am a Leo moon. So energetically, Leo represents so much about creativity and confidence. This is also marking the first moon cycle as we are now heading to the end of the year towards the winter solstice. So the sun is starting to go back into hiding. New moons are really about manifesting. Take It is a time of kind of inner reflection. The sky is completely dark. Um, therefore, rather than during the full moon when it's about celebration and abundance, we're really coming closer and we're like, what are we trying to cultivate and manifest for ourselves? So when influenced by the energy of Leo, there's so much emphasis on creativity and confidence. When playing with the concept of, you know, what we're looking for to manifest, kind of going into this last half of the year, we're looking at what were, what were our goals? I want you to reflect on what your goals were towards the beginning of the year if you want to kind of look into it further astrologically when the full moon was in leo all the way back in february there's a lot of energy around the same kind of topics with creation and confidence behind your creations so really reflect on looking what for the rest of the year what you're looking on trying to create for yourself and also it's really important energetically in leo that we also question our motivations. When we're questioning our motivations behind why we are creating, you know, is it coming from a place of pride or arrogance, wanting notoriety? Not that these are necessarily bad things. It's a very human thing to want validation, wealth, abundance. Like these, these are often things that we can, we demonize. There's really no reason to. These are very human experiences that we all as a collective can understand. But it is important that when in creation that these more human reasons are not the sole driving force behind it. That is really when we run into bumps and roadblocks. So if you maybe are finding that what your work have been working to cultivate, you feel like you're getting kind of stopped along the way, then it really is good to kind of tune into yourself and question, why am I doing this? Is it with loving awareness and ultimately having something to offer to the world and to the collective and questioning your driving forces maybe if they're more selfish and arrogant so in relation to this practice how we're bringing that leo energy in it was definitely very fun and playful and kind of approach this with almost childlike love right like how kind of like tuning into when you know you were a child doing crazy activities on the playground with very little sense of self-preservation. We're trying to look for that type of childish fun here in this practice as well. That's really a lot of what the Leo energy is about. That being said, energetically being under Leo, speaking from a place of knowledge, we tend to get a little arrogant. So this is going to be a little more of an intermediate flow. Not to say that beginners are totally out of their depth, but this could definitely be difficult for some people. And why I'm saying this is, you know, be aware that when we're kind of cultivating and playing with this energy of Leo, it can definitely, we can definitely be more susceptible to arrogance and ego is the step to injury in yoga ultimately. So even though we're being playful, we're being confident, we're trusting ourselves and our bodies, we are also, we're not going to be stupid, okay? So still respect where your body is at. In yoga, we are not glorifying the body by any means, but relatively celebrating ourselves and the world around us and using our bodies as that method of celebration. So with all of that being said, let's get into it. We're going to start at the very top of our mats in a forward fold. So get there however you're going to get there. You can 
Just touch the floor, clasp onto opposite elbows like so, and just hang here, closing your eyes, starting with the breath. I have baby bend into the knees, making sure that we are folding from our hips and not our lower back. Your feet can be a little wider than your hips if that finds, if you find that more comfortable. So in this space, what are we looking to manifest? What are we creating? What is inspiring us and how can we inspire others? On your inhale, starting to drag the hands up the shins or all the way up to the thighs, looking halfway, flattening the back. I really want you to feel the engagement that it's taking. We're going to carry this engagement through a little flow. And exhale all the way back to forward fold. On your inhale, grounding through the heels, lifting all the way up, stretching up high mountain. And big breath in. Exhale, hands still reaching forward, finding that engagement in the halfway lift as we're slowly lowering to a halfway flat back and then alter all the way down to a forward fold. Inhale, straight up, hands reaching forward just as you came down to all the way up to standing. And exhale, reach it back down, fold flowing here, kind of like you're scooping dirt up off of the ground, lifting all the way back up. And exhale, all the way back down. Inhale one more time, scoop it all the way up, strong legs here. Exhale, circle your arms all the way back down. Now pause here, your arms sending back, kind of like airplane here engaging through the core, a flat back. And that finishing your exhale all the way down to fold. Good, just inhale all the way back up to standing. One more big stretch, maybe find a little bit of a back bend. Pushing the hips far forward. And exhale back up to standing. Just step it wide to feet to the feet are going to be parallel to the short end of the mat as wide as what's comfortable for you. <clears throat> Take your heels a little bit more outward than your toes. So your your uh, the tops of your feet, your toes are actually pointing inward. We're slightly internally rotating our hips. Clasp the hands behind the back. We're going to really roll the shoulder back, feel your hey, like your hands are being pulled, but keeping the floating ribs down and still engagement through the core, keeping the tailbone slightly tucked, and send it all the way front and forward to our forward fold. The hands are going to drop wherever they drop. Try not to think about it too much, just finding a nice opening in the shoulders, in the hamstrings. In this, po in this practice, as we're working with the moon salutation, I understand that this is less common than our uh, sun salutations, foundation of vinyasa yoga. So we will be working with the poses that go into a moon, sal moon salutation individually. We'll be building on, finally, until we can feel comfortable going into our moon salutation. All right, bringing the hands back to the hips, to your lower back, releasing all the way back down. Now push into the floor to bring your heels in, toes out a generous bend through your knees, coming up to your goddess pose, hands up and overhead. <sighs> strong, strong pose here. So like I said, we're going to be working with the poses that make into a moon salutation individually, getting comfortable with those before we add them on to our flow. 
You sink a little lower here, a deeper bend through knees, keeping that tailbone tucked, super important. We're not dumping into the lower back here. From here, just heel toe, your feet in, keeping those knees bent, bringing the hands down to palm. Heart center and lowering all the way down to our malasana, our yogi squat. Big breaths. You can put the hands on the mat here. I'm just going to find an easy way to skandasana, so straightening into the left leg, keeping the right knee bent. Hands can stay on the floor and go up to the heart. Then your hands can stay up to your heart center if that's accessible to you. We're going to go into the second side. Uh, more comfortable variation to take is just place your hands on the mat to help support you to shift. But if you're ready, planting that palm and shifting all the way over into our skandasana on the second side. Bending it forward, dropping the right knee back, send the left to meet the right. We're going to have our knees as wide as our shoulders, hands extend forward. Rest gently here for a few moments in child's pose. Maybe rock the hips side to side. All right, plug into those hands. They are right where they need to be to tuck the toes under, send the hips up and back to downward facing dog. All right, here we go, stepping the right foot forward, dropping the back knee down, finding our low lunge, Hands scoop up overhead, or arms, sorry. Drop the hips down low, find a generous stretch. Circle the arms back, plant into the fingertips here, curl the back toes under, lift the back leg up, step it in about halfway your mat, dragging the front hip back, the right hip back, to our finding our pyramid pose. Only if it's comfortable, we can walk the hands into the opposite direction so they are facing, the fingertips are facing the back of the mat, making sure that you are pushing the right hip back as you are dragging the front forward. Active in both legs here. Before finally dropping the forehead down to the shin. Nice Shoulders are staying down away from the ears. Still engaging the pelvic floor of the body. Walking the hands forward. Just going to spin the back heel, about pair so it faces the parallel side of the mat. Taking the right hand to the inside of the right foot, spinning and rotating, opening the chest, finding our triangle pose. Same engagement in the legs here, making sure our hips are not turning inward, but they are shining forward, looking up to the sky and if it's comfortable for your neck. Powering into our core, letting the left hand drag back to take you all the way up, feet staying the same, just reversing our triangle, stretching through the front body now. All right, both hands spot cartwheeling down to meet the mat. So just step it back to down dog. Just walk it out here on the spot. I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. All right, 
Now step it forward with the left foot, dropping the back knee down. Okay, arms up and over, hello lunge. It's kind of like I said before, we're keeping the low ribs down. It really helps with engaging the core. So my tailbone is tucked. My low ribs are not reaching up. They're staying down. Arms up and overhead. Circle them all the way back down. Tuck the back toe. Step the foot into the halfway mark in your mat. Dragging that left hip back, pushing the right forward. Finding your pyramid pose, taking whatever arm variation is comfortable. Maybe even kicking the back heel up if you can. Don't worry about it. The point is, like I said, to play, to be creative, to be inspired and to inspire. From here, taking the left hand to the inside of the left foot, spinning, maybe walking it back a little bit, spinning that right heel, right foot to the short end of the mat, opening the chest up to the left side, triangle pose. Making sure our hips, our hip points are even. Reversing this triangle by allowing the right hand to drag you all the way back and up. Now breathing into the front side of the body. Cartwheeling both the hands down now. Step us all the way back to our downward dog. Now maybe, with or without realizing it, you've just played in a moon salutation, just in a bit of a backwards and broken up way, but I think you're ready to go into your moon salutations. Step the feet to the center of the mat, just roll it all the way up to standing. So I'm just going to turn to face you. It might be a little easier to do this kind of facing the long end of your mat like I am. Hands up and overhead, touching the fingertips together. Now imagine you're in between two walls so there's no space for forward folds or back bends. Just simply reaching over to the back of your mat, finding a side bend, tailbone tucked, ribs down. And exhale all the way over to the other side. Inhale back to center, exhale, step the feet out, toes facing the top corner of your mat, heels in, arms still up and overhead, bend into those knees, back to goddess pose. You remember this. Strong pose, tailbone tucked, straighten those legs, arms out. Point the left toes forward, right feet along the short edge of the mat, sending the hips back, reaching far, far forward, and dropping it down, triangle pose. Spinning the top arm to meet the mat. You're gonna take your back foot to a 45 degree angle, folding over the left leg, pyramid pose. Shifting the hips forward, dropping the right knee to the mat, keeping those toes tucked under this time, scooping the arms up and overhead, low lunge. Placing the hands down to the mat along the right side, spinning it forward to our skandasana. Did you hear my hip hop? <laughs> So like we did before, hands stay up at the chest, reach down to the floor to support you, but either way we're finding our skandasana on the second side here.
Planting the hands now forward, looking to the back of your mat, spinning it to a low lunge. What? Yeah, we did that. Scooping the arms up and overhead, tuck those toes, give you a little extra support. Hands come back down to the mat, lift the back knee, step it in halfway, mark to the mat, straighten that left leg, folding over, pyramid pose. Now spinning that back heel so it's along the short end of the mat, you know where we're going, opening up, triangle. Let the top arm guide you all the way up and back. Bring the feet in, heels and toes out. Sit all the way down, goddess pose. You can find a little movement. Like I said, we're working with playing. We're looking with being creative, making these poses our own. Okay, that's enough straightening through the legs. Hands together, walk heel toe your feet in so that they touch. Side bends once more. Back to the exhale center. Inhale, exhale, second side. Back to center. One more time, and I promise we'll start to close. So, hands up, side bends. You know what you're doing here. Step. Feet out, heels in, toes out, lower our goddess pose. Straighten the legs, we're going a little faster, don't worry, you know what you're doing. Now pointing, what leg is this? Right leg. <laughs> pointing the right leg, the right toes to the back side of your mat. Reaching up forward, finding our triangle pose. Are you keeping up with me? Bending over, taking that back foot to a 45 degree angle, pyramid. And if you're not sticking with me, if you're falling behind, then at the very least, I only ask that you feel inspired and you push yourself to do better each and every day. Bending into that front knee, dropping the back, low lunge. Hands down, meet the mat, opening up, spinning it to the long edge of your mat. Skandasana. Making your way, Skandasana, over to the second side now. Spinning it forward to the top of your mat, low lunge. Maybe you're starting to get the hang of it now. Maybe you always had the hang of it. Circling the hands back, stepping it halfway. You know what to do, straighten that front leg. Our pyramid, our hamstring stretch. Maybe here last time we play by walking those hands back, kicking the right leg up, finding a balance. Maybe not, just play. Have fun with it. Opening up to your triangle, spinning that back heel. Letting that back hand guide you all the way up, heels in, toes out. Goddess. This is like my least favorite pose for the longest time. Just because it lights my quads up like no tomorrow. It's not to say it's my favorite pose now, but it's definitely more attainable the more I've practiced it. So if that inspires you, let it. 
Big breath in, straighten those legs, heel toe your feet together so they're touching. And side bends to one side. Inhale back up to the top and exhale to the other side. Inhale back up. Just going to take our feet a little wider than our hips. Hands heart center, slowly. If your quads are burning, that means they're working all the way down to our malasana. <laughs> My knee popped. <laughs> Using your elbows to kind of push your knees up and wide. <sighs> Let your heart rate just lower a little bit and set it back all the way. Come to face the top of your nap mat. <sighs> just sit and kneeling for a second. Hands on the lap, one hand on top of the other. Catch your breath. Alright, from here, <clears throat> we're going to go into some version work, <coughs> which may sound intimidating, but it only stays intimidating if you don't even try it once. So just to warm up the shoulders, we're going to go into a dolphin. So make sure you measure the distance by clasping opposite elbows. That's how you're going to make sure that your elbows are aligned underneath your shoulders, placing them down on the mat, hands can palms be flat, they can be uh, what's this? What's the word for this? I don't know. Folded, fingers intersected, whatever. Walk the heels back, kind of like you're going to a forearm plank, and then send the hips up and back like a down dog. We'll call this our dolphin pose. You can walk out the legs here. Maybe the hamstrings are a little more open. Maybe not. If you've never done a dolphin before. This might feel like the hardest thing ever. But let it feel like the hardest thing ever. Maybe this is your point today. Maybe this is your inversion. You can always find comfort and safety going back into this little more stable pose. Really push into those elbows. I want you to think about cultivating the shoulder strength here. You're going to need it later. Front head. All right, that's good. Drop the knees. Just rest in childs for a second. coming up and forward you can take that dolphin once more just to really work on building up the shoulders but if you are experienced or you want to play practice with our headstand then we are going into that now measuring the distance with our palms touching our elbows here making sure our shoulders are aligned we're going to clasp the fingers and creating a little a little hammock we'll call it a hammock because we're creating a little hammock for our head so really important that we tuck the chin here kind of hold take your hands to kind of support your head here get it so i call it a headstand making sure the crown of the head is what's touching not the forehead not the back of the head the crown of the head the very top is what's going to be on the floor here so okay let's let's just talk about it let's talk about it so Headstand's definitely more of an intimidating posture, even for myself. It is the one and only pose I've ever actually injured myself on. Um, but that's getting into that whole concept of ego at play in yoga. Ego results in injury when talking about yoga. So, really important, speaking from my personal experience, do not push yourself past your limit in this. We don't want to, we don't mess around with our neck, people, okay? Really making sure you have a sturdy, strong foundation here. If you can't lift your legs up, if you can't get that full inversion, that's okay. It only means that you have something to work on, which is the best part of yoga. So really what we're thinking about is we're putting like 20% of our body weight on the tops of our heads, max. 
really the majority of our weight is going into our shoulders. I really want you to think about pushing those elbows, those elbows, that hardest point of your body. That's what's going to go into the mat. That's what's going to support you. You can try this up against a wall. I might create a video in the future, uh, more so going into headstands and versions of how we can really utilize the wall. If you already know how to utilize the wall, I invite you to do so. But we're raw dogging this shit with me. So clasping the hands, making sure your elbow distance is shoulder width apart, tucking the chin to bring the crown of the head, sitting your head into your little hammock you created, sending the hips up and back like that dolphin pose we just did. You're gonna walk the feet closer and closer. It's a lot of weight on your shoulders. Really bear down to those elbows until you bring one leg up, maybe even the other playing here. Or if you feel ready, finding your headstand. This is really hard to talk through. <sighs> Deep breaths here. We're not staying too long, probably because I can't hold it for too long. Start to lift your legs up. I'm not extending too far because I'm scared I'm going to lose my balance. And once you fear, feel that fear creep up, that's when you know that you've reached your limit. Don't push it any farther. Okay, <laughs> drop the knees down. Scoop the arms around and back to an easy child's pose. really important that we rest in this neutral position after an inversion, making sure we don't get a head rush. Letting the flow of blood through our body regulate naturally. Come rock it side to side. Massaging the hips slowly, very, very slowly, drag it all the way back up here. <sighs> all right, coming to the center of our mat. You can just sit kneeling, easy seated. Just gonna go through the, uh, the planes of motion with our spine. So grab hands onto your knees. So going into a seated cat cow, so sending the belly forward, a little curling chin up and rounding through, tucking the tailbone and chin to the chest. Inhale one more. And exhale. Inhale back to center, arms up to find length, finding an easy twist over to the right. Back to center, and exhale to the left. And get it back to center, and this time just sliding the right hand out, left hand up and overhead, finding a side bend. And exhale, second side. Now back to center. Sit here in silence, just in a calm seated meditation and really gathering all that we've done today. Coming back to that intention when we practice here, cultivating this energy of the new moon, what we're manifesting, what we're looking to create, how do we want to inspire others and how do we feel inspired by others? How do you feel inspired even by yourself? Hands up to heart center, Anjali Mudra. I see that creative artist living and breathing inside of all of you. That love and light in me sees and honors the love and light in you. And for that we say namaste. Thank you so much for joining me on this very, very special practice. I really hope you enjoyed. I had so much fun writing this one. I really felt personally. So I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure you leave me a like. Comment down below anything you'd like to see. 
give yourself a big old compliment because you did wonderful in this practice today and subscribe for more because it puts a smile on my face. Until I see you the next time, thank you so much.